Hi everyone, welcome to Forensic Examinations 5, File Signatures, Metadata and the Caller Bomber. Now in this video we're going to cover uh, file signatures, I'm going to explain to you what file signatures are, I'm going to explain to you what metadata is. I'm also going to incorporate the things that we will cover in this video uh, into a new story which you may or may not have uh, heard about or read about in the last month or so about a guy that everyone is labelling the Caller Bomber. Um, there is uh, a URL here. Okay, if you wanted to follow that, then that'll take you to an article uh, regarding this this new story. But the basic in and out of it is uh, this guy attached a collar to a girl uh, with a bomb, but, well, he said a bomb attached to the collar, um, saying that if she took it off, the bomb would obviously explode. There was a ransom involved, but what the guy did was attached a USB memory stick to the collar, and on that memory stick was... The ransom note. Now, forensics looked at the uh, thumb drive, the, the memory stick, and found another version of the ransom note, like an older version, and in that was the metadata, which basically ID'd the guy who wrote it. All right. So <clears throat> I'm going to open up the SIFT workstation. Obviously, use autopsy. I'm going to go through and show you uh, a memory stick which I've imaged all right using uh, the techniques i've shown you before uh, i've written a couple of ransom notes on it um and we'll go through the various information that's on there also while i'm there i'll cover file signatures and metadata because that all can work into the story okay so in autopsy as i said i've, I've imaged a 256 megabyte uh memory stick okay uh, and we're going to look at the C partition, main partition of it. All right. Now, you'll notice that this is a FAT file system on the thumb drive. We haven't covered FAT file systems yet, uh, but uh, I do plan on doing it soon. Um, but it's not important for what we're going to do here right now. So these are in red here because I've actually deleted the files. Um, from what I could gather on the news story, the guy had done several versions of the ransom note and then deleted it. Okay, and there was one on there which I haven't done, but it doesn't matter. You'll get, you know, you get the general idea, all right? So first of all, we're going to look at file signatures, all right? Now, as you can see, each file here has a file extension, all right? So JPEG, uh, GIF, DOCX, which is when uh, Microsoft Office uh, Word, it's the newer versions, the DOCX, the older ones are dot .doc only. Again, it's not important, although... The new uh, docx, uh, the way that the Word documents are built, is very interesting, and I'll show you that in a moment. Right, uh, PDFs, which is Adobe, and then zip. Obviously, it's a compressed file that you can open with, uh, you know, WinZip, WinRAR. Okay, so if I open up the, if I click on the JPEG file, all right. Now, Autopsy will show you the, what the actual image looks like. You can view the full size of the image. There it is. Okay. Um, the file signature for this is, if I go to the hex, what we have here, I'll make a right mess of this, bear with me, right, okay, what we have here is the hex data within that file, all right, and this is the ASCII data in the file. Um, it's the same thing. If you if you're not if you're not too sure of what I'm talking about, right? The hex, the he, this this is the hex data here. All right. The ASCII data here is represented by the hex. So what you see here is what the operating system or Firefox is trying to interpret from this. All right. So each one of these is represented by two of these. All right. If you remember when I talked to you about Unicode before, all right, the purpose of Unicode was whereas um, each of these would refer to, uh, sorry, two of these would refer to one character, Unicode is uh, two hex characters. The purpose of which means you get double, uh, not double, sorry, you get a hell of a lot more characters different characters that are available it's, it's good for registry and things like that okay so what we have here is the x like i said this is the ascii i like ascii because you can 
they they tend to embed information that you couldn't read, whereas this you can't make a lot of sense out of straight away. Uh, JFIF is part of the JPEG signature. All right. So if I were to um, scroll this down and select the other JPEG, all right, uh, go to the hex value again. J JFIF is there. All right. Um, you also notice there's EXIF, all right, which is extra information. If you scroll down, you'll see that this image was taken with an Olympus digital camera. Uh, there's a date there as well, which is the 21st of October 2002 at 11.36pm uh, and 47 seconds. Okay? Now this time here, this extra information, is placed on usually by the hardware that's taken the image. So a digital camera will embed as you can see that information right there if you look at the same for like i've got an iphone it will embed apple iphone into it the iphone as well i'm not sure about other mobile phones i'm sure it is the same these days but the apple iphone will also embed um geo information into the image so um, I could take a picture outside my house and upload it someone could then download the image look at the exif data put it into whatever software that can extract geolocations and they can see where my house is which is quite frightening um, so anyway I digress this is your file signature here okay um, this dot 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 here is only because the operating system that I'm using right now cannot interpret what these characters are in uh, there are no ASCII representations installed right now for this uh, this character. I can tell you now that if I were to go and take those four there, all right, it's going to be it's going to look. Let me just put it up into this view. It's going to look like that. Y O Y A. All right. It's not actually Y O Y A. It's Y with two dots above it. Uh, I think an A with two dots above it. But basically, it looks like Y O Y A. All right. If you were using something like N case to do your examination, the the like I said, I, I tend to look at ASCII only um, because you can spot things straight away. Like JFIF is there. You would in like in, like in N case for example, see yo -Ya as well, and that allows you to spot uh, JPEG images, for example, that are lost in an allocator. Whatever. If you just happen to be scrolling through, what we have here is. A GIF image, all right. Uh, GIFs can be animated, as you can see. Tweety pie is twinkling. Uh, you can get large. I've seen, uh, you know, ten-minute movies squeezed into a GIF file. Um, obviously, you won't have sound, but you will get, you know, you can get quite lengthy animations in a small-ish file. All right. GIFs are used for, you know. Uh, websites because you can have animations like banners and things all right if i just show you there's the file signature for gif all right is gif 89a uh, there's the hex representation of it all right uh, and that's there is the contents of the gif file all right it, it all looks like garbage but it all represents colors and you know how many colors etc etc Right, this is the Word document. Now, I'm going to show you in hex. All right, this is this is what I want you to just remember. This, this is a PK. As you can see, the the file signature is PK. All right. Now, I'm going to show you zip files in a minute, and they have the same file signature. If you just look a little bit further down, you've got contents type dot XML. All right. Now, basically. Word documents, I think the thing goes for Excel as well. I haven't played too much around with that. But the new version of the Word documents are more or less just compressed files. All right, if I, if I just show you quickly the zip file, take a second to load because it's a little bit larger. We'll show you the hex display for that. See, you've got PK there as well. And if you just scroll further down, you see ransom note.docx, and that's because each of these files here I just packed into the zip file just, just to show you what it looks like, okay? And that there's the contents of uh, this file at the moment, which is in the zip file. 
all right so just just remember if you can just bear with me a little while while uh, I go through the PDF one before I get to the zip file just remember that the zip and the doc X are basically the same file structure all right and I'm going to show you something when we come to the collar bomber stuff I'm going to show you uh, what I can do with this doc X file which can show you quite a lot of information all right PDF hex display PDF, you got you got the percentage sign there, PDF dash one point four uh, and another percentage sign there, alright? Now see you've got the word there stream. Now the built uh, PDF files are all built into streams. Now if I were to sit down properly with this, you know, with a bit of time to kill, we could work out from this stuff here. This is stream dot x there. Some kind of information here, some of these numbers, if you convert them into decimal or uh, chuck them into like a scientific calculator you can break down the PDF into streams alright this is stream whatever um, and it'll tell you how long the stream is what point in the file the stream stops and picks up the second stream and you, you can basically use that to rebuild PDF files from um, an allocated space alright and then finally we come to zip file hex display and we've got again the PK. All right, those that I mean that's just a couple of file signatures. I mean you can look up your own. There's loads of different files that you can check. Um, it's a way that the forensic software will recognise files for what they are, even if the person has renamed the the file. So like I said earlier on, if I had a JPEG file and I didn't want people to see it as an image, if I renamed a .doc, Windows is going to choke on it because it doesn't know what to do with it whereas I mean you can open these files up in notepad because notepad will open it is it just a plain text reader and you'll see the file signature is different okay you'll see the ASCII representation by the way not the hex um, like I said Harlan Carvey uh, in his book covers uh, date hiding where someone with a hex editor can change the file signature to make the file temporarily un unavail uh, unreadable and then if they want to go back in and access it they just got to put the same hex signature back in and, and the file works and that, and that is true that can happen and it's a good way of hiding data from people um, but it's also an excellent way of really screwing your data up if you're not sure what you're doing right I'm going to pause the video because uh, I'm running out of time to squeeze onto YouTube um, I'll see you in a few seconds back in part 2 of Forensic Examinations 5.